Hey, welcome back to uh, How to Lead Worship. And this is video number two, uh, entitled um, yeah, Attitudes. <clears throat> this is really just an introduction to a lot of the different things. We'll be talking about attitudes throughout because they relate so drastically uh, in leading worship. But this is just kind of like the introduction to other specific ones. Um, I know that I said this one would be burnout, but uh, I want to hold off on burnout um, for another video, just to kind of give you an introduction to video into the attitudes. Um, really, there are there are three main ones that I, main attitudes that I want to talk about. They're affecting a lot of people in ministry: uh, burnout, uh, bitterness, and adultery. Uh, I, we'll also be talking a lot about pride too. Um, very, very uh, important topics. I know you might say, well, isn't this kind of a funny place to go in a How to Lead Worship video series? Yeah, it is, but with the number of uh, people who are failing in ministry because of these issues, it's important that we discuss them now because it will make, I promise you, it will make a positive impact on your ministry. Um, the first thing I want to clear up is something I left out on the last video on accident. Um, I... I didn't say where I get my my view, my wh how I get what I say. Um, and to that, let me let me just clear that up. First of all, I, I get it from yeah, from uh, personal experience. I explained a lot of my experience in the last video, uh, video number one. I get it from the Bible. I get it from uh, Christian non and non-Christian uh, non-fiction literature. Uh, I get it from other worship leaders, I get it from observing, different things like that. Um, and as far as what qualifies me to do this, to teach, absolutely nothing. Uh, I'm working on two associates and a bachelor's, and then from that I'll be going on to a master's and to a doctorate then. But for right now I'm just working on my bachelor's and associates. Um, <clears throat> so hopefully that clears up the questions that I didn't answer last time. Uh, for for burnout, um, now I'll wait till the next video to mention that. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and start off with some scripture. Um, in the book in the book of John, chapter five, uh, there's a story of a paraly paralytic man who's lying next to the pool of Bethesda. Uh, you know, I don't remember what city that's in. Jerusalem. It's in Jerusalem. It was in Jerusalem. I don't know if it's still there or not. Um, let me just uh, tell you a few things here. Hopefully, it'll, you'll be able to relate to this. Uh, for 38 years, this man was paralyzed next to his pool. Um, it seems to me like like the Bible kind of implies that he'd been ignored. Um, before you think that I'm adding something to the Bible, let me let me explain how I got that. Um, number one, nobody ever helped him into the pool, um, or at least never su successfully helped him into the pool. I don't know if people actually didn't help him into the pool, like. I could be misreading, I, there, it could say in there that somebody tried to help my, I don't know. Uh, but nobody successfully helped them in 38 years. Um, I don't know if that's because they were busy with trying to get themselves healed, whether they just didn't care, whether they didn't see him, whether they didn't know him, whether they didn't feel comfortable, whatever. Moral of the story is, after 38 years, he hadn't been healed. Um, and for the whole discussion on, uh, on why he needed to go into the pool of Bethesda to get healed, I would advise reading your Bible and reading some commentaries, maybe that'll clear up some, some confusion for you. Um, and then also, uh, none of the Pharisees or spiritual leaders ever, we have we don't have record of them ever um, communicating with this man, helping this man, uh, at all. Um, but anyway, Jesus comes and heals him, uh, and the Pharisees get mad, because they see him walking with his mat. Um, and then when they find out that Jesus healed them, they get mad at Jesus because Jesus healed the man on the Sabbath, um, and because in when Jesus goes to defend himself, he says, "My Father's working on Sunday on on the Sabbath," which uh, sorry, the Jews did not have Sabbath, their Sabbath on our Sunday. I, just, I slipped up. Um, <clears throat> uh, which of course he was claiming. He was claiming to be equal to God, and that made them uh, made them upset. Um, the Pharisees did not believe in working on the Sabbath because, in the books of the law, 
Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Um, God tells them to not work on the Sabbath. In fact, uh, when the manna fell from heaven in the book of Exodus, uh, they were instructed to gather twice the amount on the sixth day, <coughs> and then have everything prepared so that on the seventh day they didn't have to do anything. Uh, but during this, uh, the Pharisees kind of lost sight of why the religion was there. They set their eyes on the religion rather than on the relationship aspect of it. Um, they lost a compassion for the people. Um, and learned to do their ministry so well that they put the ministry above the purpose of the ministry, which was, of course, the people. Uh, Jesus said the two greatest commandments were to love God and love people, yet they put those commandments lower than upholding the Sabbath. And what happened to some degree was that they would over-enforce the law so that people, when people fell short, which they knew that they would, they would still be within the borders of the law. Um, and the Pharisees, the Pharisees were a highly respected religious group, uh, spiritual leaders, um, and they knew it. Um, they were a small group, but they had this attitude of being spiritually higher than everybody else. Um, and also they had this, this attitude that because Jesus wasn't doing it their way, according to the law, this was a whole revolutionary idea to them. Um, they didn't see it as right. Um, <clears throat> like I said, they got caught up in the ministry aspect of it. Um, and they get they got this wrong attitude from it. They just, you know, look, why are you healing this man on the holy day? What is wrong with you? You know? Um, and that's really what I want to deal with in this, in this uh, video is the attitudes that we carry over into our ministry. Um, when, we, when we start ministry, especially, um, if we start it alone, or if we start it in groups, but uh, especially if we start it alone, we can get this attitude of, you know, it's my way. Uh, we get this bitterness and this anger kind of built up inside of us, uh, and it can ruin God's enabling of our ministry. Um, we can allow this attitude to aid us in treating others both in and out of the body of Christ uh, wrong. Um, we kind of get this uh, this attitude of either you should be helping me or you should have been helping me. Um, and then even when people go to step up it, it, to help us, we often do this thing of, you know, it's my way or, uh, if you don't do it my way, my way you're wrong because I'm right. Um, I had to start this ministry by myself. Uh, you know, and now I'm not going to cha start changing how I do it because uh, because you who've been here only a little while, you know, pulling the whole, do you get what I'm saying? That that whole attitude, you know, of 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 just a very uh, unhumble attitude, a very prideful attitude, a very uh, an attitude that I believe can ruin our our ministry. It can cause us to stumble into things like burnout, bitterness, adultery different things like that. So it's important that we discuss this first before we even discuss the aspects of how to lead worship. Um, <clears throat> this one time, this is a true story, there was this visitor that came to the church and some of the people, he was wearing a hat, um, and some of the people approached him and said, you know, we don't wear churches and hats, in, sorry, hats in this church, you're going to need to take it off. Uh, and it offended this person and they left and they didn't come back. Now, ultimately, yes, uh, there should be law. And I get the fact that some people say, well, they were going to leave either way. Well, first off, you don't really know that. Um, second, was it really that important that the that hat was off? I mean, they lost somebody who they could have potentially saved uh, because they held the law too strict. You know, where's too far? You know? Um, there should be law, there should be order, not just the Old Testament law, I'm talking about modern law, rule, yes, that should be, you know, when people don't have some kind of authority figure, oftentimes they can just go away and go around, you know, Proverbs talks about where there's, where there's a king, you know, uh, order and everything, and where there's vision, where there's a vision, the, the people don't perish, and I, I don't, I don't want to start quoting because I know I'll misquote it unless I have the, the verse and I've done study on it, which at this point I haven't. 
but in all throughout Proverbs it talks about that, you know, um, the king leading the people. Um, and oftentimes, oftentimes we can kind of chase people out, you know, with this attitude, uh, which also does obviously affect our ministry. Um, sometimes we'll pray for people to be brought in either to the church or into our lives so that we can witness to them. But then we will ignore or overlook the people who are right in front of us, either in the church, uh, who need encouragement, who need, you know, something, you know, who are needy, or the people out in the world who aren't saved, uh, that need, uh, need help from us, the Christian, you know, the Christian family. Um, and so then, we would neglect those in front of us, but we want God to bring us more. Um, in fact, in some cases, I've known of where the people were separating, creating sex and uh, sects, not sex, um, in the family where some people were just pushed away, and uh, actually God ended up calling some of those people out of the church and, and, and to a different location. I'm not encouraging church hopping, but. Um, when God moved those people, they were able to be more effective in their ministry. They were able to actually uh, ex uh, excel in their spiritual development. Um, often, to, uh, also, I'll throw this in here, uh, missionaries as well. Uh, I knew a few when I was younger. I'm not saying all missionaries. I'm not attacking missionaries. The, I, I knew of some missionary, aspiring missionaries um, who ignored the people in front of them here and now, but wanted to go there then and witness to thousands of people around the world, but they didn't want to do here and now, you know. Uh, and that's good and all, but we shouldn't ignore the ministry now, and we shouldn't we shouldn't n avoid fixing the problems that we have here, you know, going somewhere else for, for ministry there, and then just blowing up on our ministry here. Uh, I hope you understand what I'm saying there. Uh, so, really, the, the message here I'm trying to get across is know, know your limitations, don't go too far. With rules, with anything, you know, watch out for your attitude. Check it with the Bible. Make sure that it's lining up to God's Word. Make sure that it's uh, of, of the spirit and attitude of Christ. Um, and, uh, like I say, next video we'll talk about, uh, we'll start delving into burnout. Um, hopefully, help you guys with some of, some of, some of those ideas. Um, I hope this has been beneficial to you guys. I hope it continues to be beneficial. Uh, and I also hope that you got the idea of what I was saying. Uh, attitudes are very important in ministry. Um, without the wrong, proper attitudes, oftentimes your ministry can just perish. Uh, so it's very important that I bring this up now. It's just to give you guys some kind of a cornerstone, a uh, foundation to lay the other stuff that I'm going to tell you on top of. Uh, and I'll try not to add, drag the attitudes and, the, and different things like that for too long and get straight to the how to lead worship aspect of it, uh, the more, you know. But these are just some real practical things that will hopefully help you. Well, hey, I'm running out of time, and uh, so stay tuned for the next video. Uh, that will be video number three, and that time it will be about burnout. <laughs> um, I apologize for this one not being about burnout like I promised. Um, I hope that you've been blessed with this. Uh, I encourage you to... Keep on keeping on, and uh, thank you guys so much for watching this. Uh, God bless.